special mission for the member of a year-long expedition, Mikhail Kornienko, did not finish with his return to the mother planet. The cosmonaut participated in various experiments, underwent tests, and was under medical control for another three weeks. Today, we will tell you about the days after his landing and we'll show the first interview with Mikhail Kornienko, which he gave on land. I don't get tired of repeating a very simple thought, which seems to me to be incomprehensible to us as a whole, as a society. The thought is, is that if we don't wake up, don't stop dividing borders and wedging local wars in the very near future, we will face a much bigger issue. The issue of the survival of humankind as a whole, an issue incomparably more important than, than the squabbles we are having now. We need to join forces to save this planet. This is only the fourth day on Earth for Mikhail Kornienko, and he's already back in his spacesuit. According to the objective of this experiment, the cosmonaut is supposed to land on the surface of a makeshift planet. The researchers and doctors need to understand how a man feels who has spent an entire year in zero gravity, and if he is ready to land on Mars after such a long journey. Okay, we have finished. All right, we finished with the simulator. Take a step back. The research program of the space expedition is not finished with the landing of the capsule. Even more so when it's a special expedition like the one of Mikhail Kornienko. Some tests are conducted straight away after the landing. Others will take a year and a half. So far, we do not know the results that will be obtained. However, watching Mikhail Kornienko accomplish the assignment successfully, it is hard to believe that he was still at the International Space Station only a few days ago. A visit to the sun and we are ready to go back to space. How does the Earth's air feel to you after the station? What are you saying? How do you find the air? I already said that the air on Earth feels as if you could cut it with a knife and spread it on a sandwich like butter. Thank you, see you in Moscow. Our cosmonauts are taken to the mobile laboratory of the Institute of Biomedical Studies, which is situated right there in the field a few meters from the capsule. Immediately after the landing, the expedition members will undergo a so-called field test. After a lengthy space flight, the simple act of sitting on a chair appears to be a challenge. However, Mikhail Kornienko is managing quite well. The cosmonaut was somewhat prepared for the fact that he would not have much opportunity to rest after the flight due to the immense interest from the science world in the members of a year-long space expedition. Five, six, seven, eight. It is important for researchers to determine the time required for the cosmonaut to adapt after the landing. The field test includes simple movements, for instance, standing up from a seated position and walking on an even surface.
then evaluating the discomfort that the movement might be causing to a person who has recently spent a lot of time in zero gravity conditions. Please rate the pain that the movement is causing you on a scale from 1 to 20. 12. One more time, please. I feel pain in my knees, and it's mainly the musculoskeletal system which suffers, and the vestibular system. Everything has its price, everything. The law of energy conservation, if I was suspended in zero gravity for 6 to 12 months, Earth is accepting me tenderly, yet causing some discomfort, and all body systems must reacquaint themselves with the Earth's conditions. That's it, in brief, and it's not a particularly enjoyable process. A special purpose recovery vehicle is parked next to the medical tent, which will take Mikhail Kornienko to the helicopter. The cosmonaut is being supported when he walks, but these are the actual first steps he's taken on the mother planet, not a part of a medical experiment. The trip back home continues. All you want after a sleepless night and a strenuous journey is to have some rest. But everyone on the helicopter wants to take a photo and get an autograph. It doesn't happen every day that you find yourself on board with a living legend who has spent an entire year in outer space. The helicopters deliver the crew to the airport of Zhez Kazgan. Russian cosmonauts will fly to Moscow from here and Scott Kelly to Houston. You know, from like vestibularly, from like a balance and dizziness perspective, I felt really good. Um, I was a lot more sore than I was last time. My legs and muscles were stiff. I had some unusual like a burning sensation on my skin for a few days. So uh, compared to my last flight, which was 159 days, I definitely felt worse, um, you know, in the preceding couple of weeks after space flight. But the good news is I feel better every day. I tried to prove, and I think I succeeded in that, that I can get the better of youth, age 55. I had my 50th birthday in orbit, and I also celebrated my 55th birthday there, and now I am recovering very, very fast. I notice that I feel that the recovery goes faster than after the first flight. It's a paradox. I stayed in outer space twice the length of the previous flight, yet I'm recovering much faster. It's important to live correctly before the flight, during the flight, just generally. Sport is the foundation of everything. I am saying some banal things, but that's okay. I swim a kilometer a day. The next day after his return, Mikhail Kornienko takes part in the Constellation experiment in the Cosmonaut Training Center. The first stage is a centrifugal ride, which is one of the most difficult exercises in the space training program. 
Let's wish the cosmonaut good luck. Close the cabin. This simulator is normally used to practice landing on Earth in manual mode. And even though a modern spacecraft performs practically all the operations in autopilot mode, the cosmonauts must be prepared for any situation. Mikhail Kornienko executed his descent from orbit, from re-entry into the atmosphere to the triggering of the parachute system. His physical condition is appraised by the doctors, and we are appraising his skill in performing uh, such a descent. And the results are very good. Briefly, before his year-long flight, Mikhail Kornienko also underwent this test. The instructors compared the results and were quite surprised to discover that some parameters were even better after the expedition. It was as if he had never stayed in zero gravity for a very long period of time where it is easy to lose those skills. This experiment shows us the capability of one's body to perform the set goals. In this case, it is the descent of a landing capsule on the Martian surface. The challenge was to reach a target set by the program, and Mikhail Borisovich did it. However, what can a man do after such a lengthy flight? Won't he be absolutely helpless landing on a different planet? This question was addressed by the experts of the Institute of Biomedical Studies within the framework of the second part of the Constellation experiment. The experiment is to prove that a cosmonaut is capable of working in a normal way after having spent a year in zero gravity conditions. Mikhail Kornienko shall complete a number of assignments. It's no secret that on the fourth day after the landing, simply walking causes discomfort. And the cosmonaut must perform a few actions dressed in a spacesuit, which is quite uncomfortable by human standards. We are moving to the operating area for the opening of an exit hatch. We are starting to open the exit hatch. The exit hatch is open. During the experiment, Mikhail Kornienko does what one will have to do when landing on Mars. He works with different tools, operates a virtual robot, opens and closes the exit hatch, moves a lot in his spacesuit. It is clear that those experiments are preliminary in their nature. Why? Because it's obvious that spacesuits will be different. For instance, during and after our experiment, we asked the cosmonauts for their uh, opinions and feedback on what they think a new type of spacesuit should be like. And we recorded them. It is clear that the leg section should be different. The viewing section should be different too. Someone suggested providing space for two backpacks on it. One to be installed in the front and the other on the back. Or for a load to be placed on the shoulders. There are a lot of questions which arise as a result of those experiments. And they will be very helpful to the scientists when they, for instance, design a new spacesuit. It is not yet clear when people might need a spacesuit for landing on Mars or some other planet. 
It is too early to make assumptions based on the results of a year-long expedition. However, even the first data we have received in the result of this large-scale scientific experiment indicate that a human being is capable of working on a different planet after a lengthy space flight. The main objective now is to create a spacecraft capable of flying to Mars. We make long-term investments to fly to Mars, among other objectives, and to colonize the planet together with, say, the United States. We will have our own plot there. So that is, it's all clear. That would be expansion. Sikorsky said, we cannot live forever. So this is our long-term investment in the future. We recorded outstanding data with Scott, and the researchers received data that was impossible to obtain 20 years ago. And for me, this is the key objective of our flight. I very much hope that this data will be decoded. It might not happen tomorrow, and might take some time, but those who will follow in our steps will definitely benefit from it. Thank you.